Dr. Ranganathan, I'm quite baffled. I have spent a little bit of time deliberately this evening trying to spell out a position, an argument. Hopefully, some of us are convinced. I don't expect others to jump off the fence and support what I've said, but I think I made a little bit of sense. What do you think? Uh, good evening, Rahul. No, you make a lot of sense as usual. Uh, good evening to my fellow panelists as well. Look, I, I don't and I have never supported Chinese puppets. And for that reason, I've decided not to visit the Maldives, Pakistan or the offices of the Communist Party of India. But to be very serious here, Rahul, there are three points I'd like to make. Number one, let's look at the perspective. And if I can correct you slightly, it's not just racist remarks that the Maldivian ministers have been making, although we are of the same race. Uh, they are deeply Hindu phobic or Hindu mystic remarks. These people have gone completely overboard. And if you were to scroll the timeline mm -hmm. of a few of those ministers, they're actually very uh, anti-Israel. They are supporting Hamas unabashedly. They are supremacist in their nature. Hence this reason for saying that Indians are smelly and this and that. So uh, other than the fact that, uh, you know, there is one thing of promoting your country. There is quite another of putting another country who is your, that is your friend that has actually given you no strings attached 100 million aid in the last couple of years. And as you said, has given vaccines at the cost of fellow Indians who needed those vaccines and still our prime minister gave those vaccines. So it's a bit like you promoting your channel, um, uh, Rahul, and some other channel saying, oh, look at this guy. How dare he do this? It's ridiculous. The prime minister did not put down Maldives at all. I mean, what is wrong in promoting our own culture, our own area that sorely needs tourists? And let me let me give you the data. And this is what is quite disappointing. Maldives in the last one year, roughly around nine and a half thousand Indians have visited Maldives. Uh, I beg your pardon, Lakshadweep. Compare that to Maldives in the last three years. Half a million Indians have visited Maldives. But that's not the disappointing bit. The disappointing bit is that in the last three years, the ruling dispensation in Maldives is blatantly anti-India. In fact, they've been caught wearing these T-shirts saying India out. They have these banners India out for the last three years. They were the opposition then. Now they're the ruling government. So half a million Indians have contributed precious foreign exchange to a country that is abusing us. So obviously, we also need to answer this question. Would I go to a country that hates Indians and says Indians out? I would never. Why have half a million Indians gone there instead of other places? But finally, this also has to be said. Yes, it's all very well. And I congratulate everyone who's promoting Lakshwadeep. But you look at the comparison, half a million Indians have visited in the last three years and only 10,000 Indians visit La uh, uh, Lakshwadeep every year. So do we want four and a half, uh, you know, lakh extra Indians to crowd Lakshwadeep when the facilities are clearly not there? And, you know, it, it would be a disaster in the making because it's an ecologically sensitive area as well. So we have to take care of our destinations. We have to prepare adequate infrastructure. This is what I'm afraid we haven't done for the last, I, I don't know, decades of, you know, pluck the lowest hanging fruit, which is Indian tourism. If we do that, we also have to say, and I think Abhijit, who is a geopolitical expert here, will also, you know, pitch in here. Uh, we should not sour our relations with Maldives. And I'm quite happy that the Maldivian government, although it is a Chinese puppet, have taken some action because Maldives is important for us strategically and geopolitically. But Abhijit will know more of that. But what I would like to say is it is absolutely reprehensible the way the Maldivian ministers acted. It is reprehensible the way our opposition acted, not in supporting uh, Mr. Modi. And it is also, I wouldn't go as far as to say reprehensible, but quite strange that half a million Indians would visit a country happily that is abusing us and saying Indians out. Let me bring in uh, Kamru Chaudhary, uh, who's, of course, uh, affiliated with the Congress Party and represents that point of view. Mr. Chaudhary, I tweeted this morning and I suddenly saw your tweet in response. You were picking holes in my argument as usual. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't think that you were making much sense. Now, uh, the reason I'm saying it is not because I think that what I say is the gospel or anything, but I just felt that you caught the wrong end of the stick there. I was making the case that, look, 
we can, of course, be very proprietal about uh, Lakshwadweep and we must encourage and promote, but we must also look at the reality on the ground. And you found that a bit of a problem. I don't know why. Uh, I referred to the fact that this government was trying to build infrastructure, bring in land acquisition and development laws, but you said that, oh, they are being challenged, they are trying to butcher the whole place, they are trying to, you know, I mean, you even went to the extent, I think, of saying that there's a ban on cow slaughter, this, that, the other, and I found that weird because, you know, pork is not served in the Maldives, as you know. That doesn't make it some sort of a exclusivist area. Neither do they serve alcohol. In fact, in one of your states, in uh, Bihar, they don't serve alcohol either. It is prohibition. So does that make Bihar some island of exclusivism? I don't understand. So uh, I just want to basically put out a basic question to you, Mr. Kamru Chaudhary. What's your problem? What's your problem? Do you want Modi? You're a liberal. You believe in democracy. You want now Modi to police every person on social media you think that anyone who says India first, Lakshwadweep first, even someone like Mr. Ayer, Mitra Ayer, is some sort of a reprobate who only sort of uh, communalizes things? I mean, that's what your ministers, your spokespeople are saying from the Congress and from Rahul, other parties. It's bizarre. Ra Rahul, you are entitled to your viewpoint. I am entitled to my viewpoint. Yeah, you're right. When, when Praful Koda Patel was appointed in 2020 as an administrator, in fact, over the last 70 years, he was the first BJP politician to be appointed as an administrator okay. of Lakshwadi. Right. Now, when he went there, what he did first, a 60,000 population of Lakshwadi with 10 inhabited islands of 32 square kilometers, he proposed to set up a 1200 rupees, uh, 1200 crore rupees road project out there in Lakshwadi. You all know, I also know, I believe that coral is a very fragile ecology of the Lakshwadi islands. What are the people out there dependent on? They are a scheduled tribe uh, guarantee, uh, protected by the Indian constitution. 95% of the Lakshwadi peoples are scheduled tribe. They have got their way of life, living out of fishing. You see, first he brought in the Amul uh, milk diary and spoiled the diary industry of Lakshwadeep. He tried to change the high court of uh, Lakshwadeep, which was based in Kerala, to another state. He tried to change the port that was very near to uh, Lakshwadeep. He tried to change it to the BJP ruled state in, in Karnataka. Then he brought in the changes in the Panchayati system of Lakshwadeep. He changed, he tried to change the names of schools which were kept on the first female graduate of that of that uh, of that islands he wanted to change it into some other names that was supposed to be uh, i don't see that the names he kept were wrong but he deliberately wanted to bring in a disruption in the entire ecosystem of lakshwadeep who what does it serve prime minister has gone to lakshwadeep very wonderful it's a very we are proud of lakshwadeep there cannot be any comparison as a tourist destination with maldives and indian tourist destinations we do not object to that. We do not have any any wrong with that. The point here is that when no, you I have, think... when you just let me finish ten seconds. When you say that I stand with Lakshwadeep, can't you say this? I stand with the people of Lakshwadeep also. No, that obviously... is the basic difference between your school of thought and my school of thought. Okay. Because you are out there to destroy the entire ecological system of Lakshwadeep okay. without even thinking that building 1200 crore roads in a 32 square kilometers of Lakshwadeep. And what did the Congress do out there? We built Lakshwadeep as a forward naval base to uh, Sir, the sir China, please just China stop there, Army Mr. Chaudhary, one second. The, you know, you can, you, can, you can change all this when you elect the next Congress Prime Minister and he travels to Lakshwadeep in an Indian warship with 200 chickens, kilos of meat, a lot of water. You can change it all there, sir. Like Rajiv Gandhi wanted to do. No problems with that. You can have a problem with Mr. Uh, this gentleman that you have named who is the administrator of Lakshwadi. That's all very well. But what does Abhishek, Dr. Abhishek Singhvi or Lavanya Jain mean when they say, Halabulu of right-wing trolls over Lakshwadweep versus Maldives has further pushed the close ally away. Modi ji begins the damage. Bhaks amplify it. Go get some wisdom. Uh, why are now, you accusing now, ordinary Indians 